All right, hi everyone. This is the third example of chapter three, Gauss Law. We are going to consider planar symmetry now. And you will see there is a catch with planar symmetry. Uh, it's uh, one that's not obvious at the beginning, so that's why I start with the spherical and cylindrical symmetry first. So let's have a look at a, a plane, a charged plane. And here we are going to be talking about a, t um, a thin plane, all right? So may maybe an aluminum foil that is really thin. So in this case, we're not going to consider the electric field inside the plane, but you will see we can use Gauss law to prove one of the formula we've been using at the end of chapter two. So we have a charged plane. We construct a Gaussian surface. In this case, it is a box. It is a Gaussian box, a rectangular box. Now, again, it is hard to draw a 3D uh, surface on a 2D board. So you can imagine that this is a prism basically, and there's four sides on the side and the two top side. Now, one thing that we did not do in the second chapter in electric field is do the derivation of why uh, the electric field is pointing directly uh, outward from the plane, from a charged plane. And the reason why this is the case is, no matter the point you're considering, there's always a charge. If your plane is big enough and you're considering a point close to the plane, there's always a charge that counteract the electric field, uh, the, the sideway part of the electric field, which means that the only remaining part is the electric field perpendicular to the plane, all right? What that means is, is there's all the electric fields going either upward or downward on this side of um, the charged plane. Now, the important part here is there's no side component of the electric field. What that means is there's no electric flux going on either side, all right? Now, in the case of uh, planar symmetry, that means there's an electric flux going up here, uh, through this area, but also through the bottom area. So remember the electric flux is equal to the electric field multiplied by the area, all right? Now in this case, we're going to consider the area of our box, the top part, which is the only part where there is an electric flux. So the to, to, add the, to, to get the total flux, we need to add electric field multiplied by this area plus electric field multiplied by this area over here. So that means now, Total flux equal to electric field multiplied by the total area, which will be A plus A. So I, um, uh, this also match the area on both sides of the plane. So electric field multiplied by A1 plus A2 is equal to 2EA because uh, this area of our Gaussian surface has to match the area here on uh, the plate. All right. Now, that's the uh, trick here, and it will always be the same. I won't try to trick you in a test. Um, it will always be the same logic. Um, we use the same formula, but now there is a two on that side, all right? Because there's two sections we need to consider that share the same area. So we have the same logic, two EA is equal to Q divided by epsilon zero. The charge here, uh, most of the time when we are talking about a, a planar symmetry, we will be given the surface charge density. As I said, we are talking most of the time about right, a really tiny uh, plane, so uh, it's a thin plane. So surface charge density is more convenient, make more sense. So surface charge density multiplied by the area, this is our charge, divided by, we take the 2A, we flip it on that side, notice the A cancel, and we get equal to the surface charge density divided by 2 epsilon zero. This is exactly the formula that was shown at the end of chapter um, chapter two, all right? And notice we solve some example in chapter two where we had two plate. Well, we could solve the exact same problem using Gauss law and we will see that it make complete sense, all right? Uh, we will solve one such example um, probably in two, two or three more videos. 